Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to talk about problem solving and also how to tackle a problem for three common situations that you're most likely going to have to face in your career and not only in iOS development but just in development in overall in general. Now in your career you're going to need to tackle one of the three things you can see on the screen here that's a bug a feature and a task. Now what we're going to do in this video is go over ways you can tackle each one since they do differ a bit and you want to make sure that you have a clear plan when tackling each one. So let's get started. So the first one we're going to tackle is task. So what is a task? Well a task can be anything but the way I like to look at a task is addition to an existing feature already. An example of this could be the one you see on the screen here. So let's say someone says to you when you finish doing a piece of work that rather than filtering out the odd numbers with a for each loop, can we improve this by using an high order function? So this is a specific example and the task here is to improve the readability and also to use a high order function instead of a built in for loop. So the principle for this can be applied to any other kind of task that you may be given. But before you actually start a task, there's a few things you want to do. You want to make sure that you actually check the existing functionality, verify and find any tests for the existing functionality if they exist, understand the areas affected by the existing functionality and keep the existing functionality alongside the new implementation so you can easily swap between them and compare. So now that you've done a task with the steps above, you want to actually make sure that you can fully test that the task that you've done actually works. So this can be either with a manual test by just, you know, open up the app and running it and checking it out or by running some kind of unit test within Xcode. Now the example that I showed you before, it would actually make more sense to actually run that with a unit test because you want to val validate the business logic works fine. But testing your implementation is key to ensure that you've done this task correctly. So similar to a task, you have a feature. Now a feature is similar to a task, but there's actually a small difference. A feature falls more into adding a new piece of functionality that wasn't there before, in my opinion. Now, a good example of this is let's say you have an app that gets a new screen that allows users to update their profile with some tags. This would be a new feature within the app. Now, before you actually work on a feature, the first thing you need are the requirements. So requirements are almost like a checklist of how a feature should work. Your logic and tests should actually be based off these requirements to ensure that you're building the correct thing. So you should be building up a picture or writing down notes for tests that you may think that you need to write to verify any business logic within this feature. And the starting points that you want to, you know, go for when you're actually working on a feature is anything you're unsure about feature wise, you want to ask with questions, any edge cases that could appear. So what could go wrong in a certain situation that's not too obvious? And are these requirements final? So has everything in this document been approved and is ready for you to actually work on? Now, after getting the requirements and understanding what it is that you're building, if this is applicable to you, then you want to make sure that you get designs and study them. So you want to look at the designs and see how they relate to the requirements. So you're essentially forming links so you can visually see what it is that you're building. Now that that is out of the way, before writing a single line of code, you want to ensure that you know the current project architecture and how to add on top of it. So now what I mean by this is if the project is using MVVM, you don't want to just start writing Viper code you know, the code base needs to be consistent. You want to build the UI first and then look at the data layer because you want to actually match the designs and make sure that everything looks good before plugging in the real data. This will make sure that you tick the design checklist. You want to actually start to build the business logic with the requirements as your guide. As you start to plug the data into your UI, you've built. Now you want to actually treat the requirements almost like a step-to-step -step tutorial of things you need to do. And then you finally want to make sure that you validate your business logic with unit tests based off the requirements. So this is an extra step to ensure and validate that your work is based off the actual requirements and also handles any edge cases that may come up. The most exciting thing that can happen to you in software development is getting a bug. And in software development, you're going to build things and sometimes it might not work as expected or even worse, your app could crash. It's almost impossible to build perfect software. So it's actually normal to expect someone to raise at least a few bugs. But when you do get a bug, the first thing you should do is not panic. Try not to get overwhelmed that something is or has gone wrong. You need a clear mind to fix the issue. So the way to tackle bugs is you want to make sure that you can actually try 
to reproduce the problem. And if you can't reproduce the problem, then you want to ask a tester or ask someone who has tested the app, what do they do to get this problem? Or if they can send you any videos or pictures and whatnot. Basically, you want to have a clear step of how you can reproduce the bug on your side. And that way you're not just coding in the dark. After finding out how to reproduce the issue, you then want to see what the journey should look like and know the end results of what it is that you're actually trying to fix. You want to find the flow. So you need to see in the code where the journey starts and ends. This is so you know all the files that are needed for you to look at. What I like to do personally is actually start at the top of the chain, which is where the data source is coming from, such as the class that fetches the data from an API. And then I actually like to work my way down to the UI files that actually use, that actually use the data. This lets me see the whole journey from top to bottom. So within the flow, you want to identify the area that is also being affected by the bug. So let's say we have a crash and when the user taps on a button, when they update their profile, what I would do is look for where the button tap is and identify if the crash is related to the button or the API call. I do this by temporarily disabling the network call and instead just having an empty button action to make sure that this is okay. Now let's say when I tap on the button, if I remove the API code and I tap on it, it's not crashing. I now know that the issue is not related to the button. Instead, it's actually somewhere in the networking code. I then put a breakpoint at the start of the networking code and then work my way through the file with the option to tap onto the next line. And then this would let me inspect and verify each line where I can see with the debugger if everything is okay. And then within this steps that I'm going to do, I'll be able to actually see where the issue is specifically in my networking code. So once I actually find the problem area, I'll actually look at and find what it should be doing and then apply a fix onto this area. And then once applying this fix out of fix, you want to actually test out the flow and then apply any unit test if possible. So when you're actually tackling bugs, you want to make sure that you actually have a methodical plan so that you can get to the issue quicker. Don't just panic and then, um, you know, look at the ticket and think, oh, I can't fix this. Take your time. Come up with a plan. Don't let anyone rush you, even though someone is trying to rush you. And just basically have a clear mind so you can actually tackle the issue properly. Now, these plans are all good and well. And I'm just suggesting good guidelines for you here. But ultimately, sometimes you're going to get issues where you're just not getting it. And in these situations, what you want to do is just take a break. Just leave the issue and just step back from it. Go and work on something else. Go and do something else. Work out, cook, watch some Netflix, watch some anime. I don't know, whatever floats your boat, just go and do that for to take your mind off the issue. Taking a break will help you come back with a fresh mind and a way to tackle the problem. You don't want to have tunnel vision and be stuck in the same repetitive loop, trying the same thing over and over again to fix an issue. This is just going to give you burnout and you won't have a clear mind at all. Another thing is to ask for help. Now, if you work in a company, this can be like your peers by simply explaining the current situation that you're in and what you're dealing with, and then hopefully someone can help you out. Having another pair of eyes on the situation can really help you when it comes to identifying issues that you're facing. But what about if you're not part of a team and you're on your own? Well, what you can do is actually ask for help on sites like Stack Overflow or Twitter. One thing I will say about asking for help online is to make sure that the details that you provide and use are clear and clearly explain what it is that you're trying to achieve so that someone can understand for themselves. So that's it for this video. Now, if you have any other tips on how you solve a problem, I'd love to hear it in the comment section below. Also as well, if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel and hit the notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.